Welcome everyone to another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. I'm your host, Elias Sarantopoulos. Understanding how the layers panel works inside Illustrator will help you become efficient and speed up your workflow. So in this Illustrator tutorial, I will teach you what each column represents in the layers panel, the functions of each icon and the options inside the layers panel menu. All these easy steps by example to master Illustrator's Layers Panel. Up next. We use the Layers Panel inside Adobe Illustrator to list, organize and edit objects in a document. We can access the Layers Panel from the window menu and then choose layers. Now by default, every new document contains one layer and each object you create is listed under that layer as we see in our example. However, we can create new layers or sub layers. So let's go ahead and explore how that works. To add a new layer above a selected layer, click the create new layer button in the layers panel. To change its name, double click the layer name, give it a name and then press enter return on the keyboard to accept the changes. You can also create a new layer from the Layers panel menu, which in conjunction will set the options for that layer. So for example, you can change its name, reflecting the artwork. To create a new sub-layer inside the selected layer, click the Create New Sub-Layer button in the Layers panel. You can also create a new sub-layer from the Layers panel menu, which in conjunction will set the options for that sublayer. So for example, you can change its name, reflecting the artwork. To delete objects or layers, select the items you want to delete in the layers panel and then click the delete icon. Another option is to click and drag the layer name to the delete icon. Lastly, we can delete a corresponding item from the layers panel menu and then choose to delete. We can also target the object in the target column and press backspace or delete key on the keyboard and that will remove its contents. So for example, I would target the butterfly item and press backspace or delete on the keyboard and that will remove all the paths that make up the butterfly object. Now, a quick note on that, a document must have at least one layer and if that's the case, as in our example, the delete icon and delete command are not available. The layers panel provides columns to the left and right of the listings and each column controls the following characteristics. The first column is the visibility column indicating the visibility of a layer item. So clicking on the eye icon makes the layer invisible or hidden. Another indicator icon that populates inside the visibility column is when we switch between preview mode and outline mode by going to the view menu or use the keyboard shortcut and that shows in the visibility column as an outline layer. Now in the event that you want to view specific items inside a layer in outline mode, press the control key or the command key and click on the eye icon in the layers panel. The second column is the edit column indicating whether items are locked or unlocked. To lock a layer, simply click to lock it and the lock icon indicates that the item is locked and cannot be edited. Clicking again creates a blank space indicating that the item is unlocked and can be edited. Next, we have the target column, which indicates whether items are targeted. To target a layer, click on the target button, which turns into a double ring icon, indicating the item is targeted. Now, a single ring icon indicates that the item is not targeted, as this is the case for the rest of the items inside layer one. In addition, when an item in the layers panel contains more than one item, a triangle appears to the left of the item's name. Clicking the triangle shows or hides its contents. If no triangle appears, 
the item contains no additional items. The last column is the selection column indicating whether items are selected. So when a layer or an item is selected, a color box appears corresponding to the assigned color of that layer. Now, if we target a specific path within an item, a smaller selection color box appears next to the parent item. If all the objects within the parent item are selected, the selection color boxes are the same size. To access a layers or sub-layers options, double-click on the layer thumbnail. The first option is the name, which specifies the name of the item. Next option, we have the layer color. Now, by default, Adobe Illustrator assigns a unique color to each layer in the layers panel, which is displayed next to the layer name. When we target a layer, the same color displays in every selected object, whether it's the bounding box, path, or anchor points. So now I will double click on the layers thumbnail to bring up its options. To change the color of a layer display, choose a color of your choice from the color drop down menu. Next, we have the show option displaying all artwork contained in the layer on the artboard. So if we check that off, nothing gets displayed. Another option here is the print option, which makes the artwork contained in the layer printable. For demonstrating the template layer option, first I will go up to the file menu and place a file as a template layer by clicking on the template option. As we can see inside the layers panel, since this is a template layer, it gets locked and its opacity is dimmed. So I would double click on the layer thumbnail to get to the layers options. And here we can see the image has been dimmed by default to 50%, something we can change to another percentage value. We can also unlock the template layer from the edit column, position the file around the artboard and lock it again. In addition, since this is a template layer, we get the corresponding layer icon indicator inside the visibility column. Artwork at the top of the layers panel is at the front of the stacking order, while artwork at the bottom of the layers panel is at the back of the stacking order, and we can change that hierarchy to fit our needs. So to change the stacking order, I would drag the item's name, and before I release the mouse button, notice the moving hand icon appearing along the black insertion marks between the items in the panel. All you have to do is to release the mouse button in the desired position. Now to move objects in the layers panel can be achieved by using the selection indicator. So to move the contents of the tree item, for example, to a new layer, first I will click the create a new layer button in the layers panel to create that new layer. Then I will click to target the contents of it or mark you select the tree using the selection tool from the toolbar and drag the selection indicator color box to the layer above. When the new color selection indicator appears, release the mouse. In this case, I will do the reverse and drag the tree item back to layer one using once again the selection indicator. Now to reverse the order of items at the same level in the layer hierarchy, I will hold down the control key or the command key on the keyboard and click the names of the items whose order I want to reverse. Then from the layers panel menu, I will select reverse order. And as a result, the pottery item comes above the baobab tree. To locate objects in the layers panel, click to target the contents of an item from the target column and then click locate object at the bottom. The contents are showing and this way we can see the stacking order of that item in relation to other objects. So revealing all the contents of an item gives us the opportunity to hide one or more objects instead of the hold item, 
by clicking the eye icon to the left of the object name. The release to layers command redistributes all of the items in a layer into individual layers and can build new objects in each layer based on the object's stacking order. So let's go ahead and see how that works. To release each item to a new layer, first target the layer in the target column and from the layers panel menu, choose release to layer sequence. As a result, each item inside the pictograms layer has been distributed into individual layers. Now to release items into layers and duplicate objects and create a cumulative sequence, choose release to layers built from the layers panel menu, which is useful for creating cumulative animation sequences. So in our pictograms layer, the airplane, which is the bottommost object, appears in each of the new layers, and the topmost object, which is the marina pictogram, only appears in the topmost layer. Merging and flattening layers lets you consolidate objects, groups, and sublayers into a single layer or group. So let's go ahead and see how that works. To merge items into a single layer or group, hold down the control key or the command key on the keyboard. Click the names of the layers or groups that you want to merge, and then use the merge selected command from the layers panel menu. As a result, the items are merged into the layer that we last selected. In this case, the pottery item group was the last selected item. To flatten layers, click the name of the layer into which you want to consolidate the artwork. Then select the Flatten Artwork command from the Layers panel menu. As a result, all visible items in the artwork have been flattened into a single layer. A clipping mask is an object whose shape masks other artwork so that only areas that lie within the shape are visible. In our example, we have a pictogram and a pattern, so we'll go ahead and create a clipping set. Inside the target column, I will target those two items, then go up to the object menu and choose Clipping Mask and Make, or use the keyboard shortcut. Once we have the clip group inside the Layers panel, I will click on its name and the Make Release Clipping Mask icon becomes active at the bottom of the Layers panel. Clicking on that will release the objects from the clipping mask, and when we open the contents of the item, we see both the pictogram and the pattern. The Asset Export panel displays assets that you collect from your artwork and that you want to export. So let's go ahead and see how that works. One way is to click on the layer's name to select it, and that activates the Collect for Export icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. So I will click on that and the pictogram gets added to the Asset Export panel. In this case, I will just click to give it a corresponding name. We can also right-click an asset inside the artboard, then choose Collect for Export as a single asset, for example, and that gets added to the Asset Export panel as well. Another way is to drag your artwork into the Asset Export panel. Once everything has been added inside the Export panel, select the assets you wish to export and then click to reveal the export settings. Here we have several choices, such as export to typical or custom sizes with different scales, or export to multiple formats by choosing different file types. So to export our assets, we are presented with a couple of choices. We can either click the export button or click to launch the export for screens dialog. Well, thank you everyone for visiting my channel, spending time with me in developing your skills. Do not forget to subscribe and share the knowledge.